Morgan, you know, we did uh, make what I thought was a, a pretty fair offer. Um, it didn't work out. He has the right, you know, once we don't qualify him to go elsewhere and look, and, and that's what he did. So I wish him the best. And, and uh, you know, Donato's a little bit different. Ryan was a, was a totally unrestricted free agent, so he had the ability to wait till July 1. We talked ahead of it. Um, he certainly loved his time here, loved the players uh, and the fans and the city and the organization. Uh, we just felt he had done a lot for us, and we owed him the opportunity to go out and test it and, and couldn't be happier for him. Uh, you've seen him get the two-year deal at $2 million. You know, He actually called shortly after just to thank us and the organization for everything. Was just, just a class kid, a true professional. So happy for them. We'd, we'd be missed by us, but you know, we've got other pieces that we look at. And you know, a guy like Ty Cartier, American Hockey League Rookie of the Year last year, and played well for us in the playoffs. We think he can step in and take a spot. You know, Shane Wright is still uh, knocking on the door as well too. So um, we've got some pieces, and we think that you know, we've got more to add with our guys. I mean, we're still a young team up front, and a lot of guys still developing, so we get more production there. And and uh, you know, this camp we're having this week is really important with development because if we're going to be a really good team for year after year, we have to have that internal push, and that's where it starts with a camp like this development camp. Well, you mentioned that growing from within, that's been a big part of what you want to do here. You made some signings to continue to alter that depth, 10 players from the draft. Just how do you see the progress going against your overall plan for the organization? No, we're pleased with it. You know, we think we had another real good draft here um, last week in Nashville. Um, um, not that, uh, you know, I look at things, but a lot of the ratings were really positive from the outside. We look at it internally, and, and we're real pleased the way it fell for us. Um, so we're excited about that. Um, <clears throat> you know, you have the American League Rookie of the Year. You have the NHL Rookie of the Year. That doesn't happen very often, so that's exciting. Um, you know, last year we brought Maddie into this camp to sort of be that leader and, and sort of show the young guys what it takes. Uh, we were hoping to have Riker and um, you know Ty come in along with Shane this year. They were a little banged up from the from the long season and the run, so we decided to let them rest and cooper up, uh, recuperate. But uh, you know Shane was willing to come in, so we're excited to have him here and working with the young guys. But we think we've got a lot of real good young pieces, and, and it's just making sure that we develop them properly. What's the outlook on the goal? Yeah, we, we've got three. There's only two nuts and spots for two. So, um, you know, two will play. And, and uh, uh, unless we do something between now and, and the start of the season, then, you know, one will have to go through waivers and go down to Coachella and play there. How did the Susie thing go down or not go down? Or what was the timetable? How long you talked or anything? Yeah, no, I, I think we kind of had a brief conversation at the end of the season and, and just where he was at and where we thought he was going to go. It probably wasn't the right fit for us moving forward um, and you know important for us in term two and looking at the stuff we've got pretty talented young player in Riker Evans we think pushing so um, it's important when we build this thing that we're not blocking Riker moving forward too so um, you know the two years for us on, on the Dumoulin thing was was you know also a nice key in, into that deal as well. It also gives us a chance for maybe a little more responsibility a little more money that he probably felt in the years old. Yeah, when you get to be an unrestricted free agent, you earn, earn that right to go test the market, and, and um, yeah, we're happy for him. We got a three-year deal at a good number, so um, hopefully it works out well for him. Cool. Other than the nights we're playing him, of course. But <laughs> other, other than that, we're good. Cole Lins kind of tore it up in the HL level. Where do we put him in terms of his NHL potential again? Yeah, no, it's uh, he had he had a great season down there, 30 goals. Um, yeah, we qualified him yesterday, so we'll try and get a contract done, and then we'll see uh, see how his training camp goes. I mean, hopefully, he gained a lot of confidence with the 30 goal season and the run in the playoffs, and uh, he's ready to push for a spot when camp opens. You qualified Vince and Will as well. How do things kind of stand with your outlook on them, and where they kind of sit in the process for you at this point? Yeah, so again, those are both guys with arbitration, right? So um, we've had uh, conversations with both camps. Um, we'll continue to do that. Um, um, we'll find out if they choose arbitration uh, and what those dates are, and, and we'll continue to negotiate. If we get something done before then, great. If not, then we go to arbitration and, and um, you know make adjustments after we find out what the rulings are. You've had three drafts now. Do you consider the cupboard fully stocked? Or if it's not, how close do you feel like you are. Oh, it's never fully stocked, but you know, we, we feel it's it's got a lot of good stuff in those cupboards. So um, you know, really pleased with, with uh our amateur staff and what they've been able to do. Um like I said, it's not every year you get two rookies of the year at the American League and the NHL League. 
you know, we're going to start seeing now, like you saw Riker last year in Coachella, we're also going to start seeing our third pick, Ryan Winterton, get in there, and Viliata Vane and, 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 and Melanson. So we're starting to see a lot of those guys happen. Next year we'll see more from the second-year draft. And it takes time to do that. But, um, you know, the outlook for what we have coming down the road is, is extremely positive. To temper expectations, what are the reasonable timelines for your draft picks from this year <coughs> to potentially see time in the NHL? Ideally, it's two more years of if they're in juniors and then and then they start coming out the American League. So it's probably a three, four year timeline. Some guys beat that timeline. Some guys take a little longer. Everybody's sort of different, and and we try and manage and and develop them according to and, and, but you know our, our staff does a real good job of staying on top of that and hopefully we can do everything we can to speed that process up to get more uh, you know prospects playing in the NHL for the Kraken. What was it about Edward Sh uh, Shala that you liked as much as you did? Um, I love his hockey sense. Um, good skill set, skates well, um, just sort of calm, cool, collective under pressure with the puck. Um, I was at the World Juniors uh, when they were playing Canada and he was not intimidated in any way, shape, or form in that game. So we think we've got a real good player there. Um, you know, the, looks like he'll play in Barry in the Ontario League next year. So that'll be good for his development, and then we'll see where he goes from there. But uh, really excited to have him in the fold. You're on the, the length of Coachella's run. How helpful was that in terms of <coughs> the organization assessing the young players, and how beneficial was it for the players to have that level of competition for an extended period? Yeah, anytime you can you can have a long playoff run, it's really beneficial. It was beneficial in a lot of ways for us. For, for some of the younger kids, we got them in there, got them a game or two, so just to get a taste of what it was like. We kept them around so they could practice and see the pace and, and the intensity in the game so they know how hard they got to work in the offseason to get to that level. Um, you know, for guys who were there all year and, and Riker and Ty going back uh, and having that experience, you know, be, saying, hey, I can play with the best in the American League and, and do it over a long period of time is, is going to build confidence for them for sure. Um, and even a guy like Shane that, you know, probably the start of the playoffs maybe wasn't at, at his best kind of thing, but it was interesting to watch as, as the playoffs went along and along. He got better in each series, and I think his best series was probably the final series. So that should give him a lot of confidence as he moves forward into next year's camp as well. Ron, you mentioned the value of uh, the AHL and Shane's placement there, and uh, just as a baseline, it seems to be NHL or OHL, but uh, how far along did he come as far as any talks with the, you know, possibly any exception there to have him play there at the AHL? Yeah, we, we are having discussions. We'll see where they go, but, um, you know, there's uh, there's an agreement in place, but I think there's also, a um, you know, hopefully a sort of a, a common sense kind of a way of looking at things and what's best for the, for the individual player. So uh, we'll have some discussions. We'll see where things go. But, um, you know, hopefully uh, we have more options than, than just those two. Ron, you talked about the importance of, like, the playoff run. How valuable is it that you have your entire draft class coming to this camp? Yeah, no, we think it's really important. Uh, you know, as I said, the, we had Maddie in the first year. He got to play 10 games. But we brought Maddie into our development camp last year. Why? Because... We want those kids to see how hard he works in practice, how hard he works off the ice, right? We were hoping to do that with not only Shane, but like I said Ty and, and uh, Riker this year. We Up until probably about four days before camp, and we gave those two guys a pass just based on being a little bit dinged up and, and more important for them to get the rest. So, But Shane's here, and he's going to do the same thing. He learned from Matty last year. Hopefully he passes that on to these guys, and the guys that are here will continue to do that as we move forward. We think that's really uh, crucial to our group to, to have that sort of leadership and, and uh, responsibility as, as they try to develop. Back to Shane's eligibility potentially for the AHL. Who ultimately makes that decision? Is it the AHL, the NHL? Who gets that eligibility? I think it's a combination between the, uh, you know, the OHL would have a say in it, the CHL overall, because it's their agreement with the NHL and then the NHL. So, you mentioned Ty a couple of times, and do you ever reflect that for all the analytics and all the good work the scouts do for all the teams going all around the world, sometimes there's going to be a guy that isn't drafted, but is just going to pop up above the weeds and and make it to the league. Yeah, I know. Uh, Love the fact that he was a Sioux Greyhound, but uh, my, <laughs> my hometown and former team. But yeah, you know, here's I mean, it's it's kind of a Cinderella story actually, right? We bring him into training camp, and then we're watching him in training camp. Go, maybe there's something there, right? And so we have the conversations with him. Go back, we're going to watch you closely, and 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 then we were able to sign him in January. 
listen, this kid worked hard, right? We, we can sit here and take a lot of the credit for finding him, but a lot of the, 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 the credit goes to him. He worked really hard last summer. He got to Coachella. He was constantly asking the coaches, what can I do on the ice to make myself better? He was asking the guy, Mike, in the weight room, what can I do to make myself better? And he continued to work and work and work, and then all of a sudden in January, things changed for him. He was one of the best players in the league from January to the end of the year. So. Sometimes it takes that kind of effort and those kind of commitment, and, and certainly he did that. And, um, you know, that's great for our organization to see him start on the fourth line in Coachella and end up playing in the National Hockey League playoffs for, for the Kraken. So um, hopefully other guys see that and they know that's an opportunity if they work as hard. What was it like emotionally to see that come up one game short for Coachella? I mean, it's crushing. It's just like us losing in game seven, right? Um, you know, having been a player, having been there, having lost in the Stanley Cup finals, you understand just how much time and effort goes into it. It's not just physically, it's mentally. Every second day you're trying to get up for a game and then you're trying to rest for the next one. And I mean, you're banged up, you're, you know, there's things that are going on. And to lose that series, you know, lose all four games by one goal and three of them in overtime, and especially a game seven in overtime, I mean, you got to feel for those guys because they gave it everything they had. The, the, the great part, um, as, as much as they didn't win, was they ignited a fan base in that valley. I mean, for the first time, I think Coachella Valley had one team that they could all cheer for, and, and, the, and the fan support was outstanding. I got to go down there for a bunch of the games, the outfits, the signs, the dancing. I mean, it was loud. It was exciting, and uh, you know, it really did a long way towards solidifying that brand in that market. So all those guys get a lot of credit for, for what they did this season. Ron, you mentioned having the cap flexibility to try to maybe do some things this summer. How much, if at all, does the possibility of signing Matty Veneer sort of extension factor into that plan? Um, you know, we'll certainly look at uh, those discussions uh, starting after today. Um, that that wouldn't hit on our cap until the following season. So, you know, we're comfortable. Um, you know, his contract's got one more year, and then it would kick in the following year. So our cap this year is fine, and, and uh, with all expectations, the cap going up next year. And where we are, we think we'll be fine cap-wise next year as well. Is that something ideally you'd like to get done this summer? You know, we've touched base with this camp, and I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of things going on with the draft prep and for agency, and, and uh, Pat Brisson and I talked, uh, actually we did a little event for, uh, our owners did a nice event for Maddie and Hack and their families uh, after the awards last week in Nashville, so um, Pat was there because he represents Maddie, and we said, hey, let's get through here a few days, and then we'll start talking, but, uh, you know, we'd like to do that for sure. Beyond the uh, Dumoulin edition, do you foresee yourself still being active for free agency on the NHL level, or are you looking for like depth signings in that at, at this stage? Yeah, I mean, you never know. I'm like, I'm not sitting there saying we're, you know, you know, really working the phone lines hard right now to do more. But um, you know, I think sometimes it's important to kind of take a deep breath and sit back and see what happened today and what's what's still possible out there and what makes sense or doesn't make sense and. Um, you know, we've had the green light from owners from day one to do what we think is right. Um, we do have uh, some cap space here now, and, and we and uh, you know we do have the ability to go and sign somebody if we think it makes our team better. Well, I mentioned that Ty and Riker are a little banged up, and a bunch of those guys played a ton of hockey. With Bynum not coming to camp, is he banged up, or are you just getting him some rest? No, it's just you know it's a long way to go back to Finland, so we had to fly him all the way back, fly him all the way back. So. Um, he was actually quite relieved when we told him he did not have to come back for camp, but we'll see him here in in, uh, in September for training camp. Any updates on Andre? Yeah, I talked to him actually last week. Um, I was sitting in Nashville. My phone rang and it was him, and I said, "Uh oh," um, but he's <laughs> he said uh, he said everything's great. He said feeling stronger and stronger every day, um, so everything was trending in the right direction. So um, that was that was good to hear. Yeah, no, no, yeah, you're always, you're always nervous when they get that call, but uh, no, it was all positive, so we're, we're excited to hear that he's, he's doing well. Is that from any player when you get the call? No, it's a, <laughs> well, it's always, he's a, trying to, yeah. you never know what's, what the call's on the other end, but it's just like when I call him, I, I usually start with, I'm not trading you, but, so, yeah, no, it's, uh, I think they pr probably don't want to call from me, it's, you know, a little easier if I get a call from them. But he's on track for September. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Awesome. Cool. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you.